I'm Ken Sorensen, I'm general manager here at KPLE TV, and he, joining me here in the studio is Doug Dietert, and this will be our fourth and final discussion on preparing for the bridegroom. Um, boy, this topic, if it doesn't leave you excited, then you haven't listened. Um, what is life like after the wedding ceremony? Mm -hmm. And I just, there's several directions I wanted to jump in on this, but that Hebrews 1 idea of Jesus being heir of all things, um, how does that affect us? He's heir of all things. Mm. Where does that leave us? <laughs> if we tie it into Romans 8, <laughs> where Paul says, we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If I'm marrying into a royal family, what am I inheriting? He's the heir of all things. I'm going to be a joint heir with him. Then I think I have a pretty exciting life coming with my <laughs> new husband, wouldn't you think? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, it just... It's, it's a, a lot to take in, you know, if, if you start putting that um, imagery together, if we're joint heirs with the one who is going to receive all things, um, we're in a pretty good, pretty good position. Um, just, but... If we're ruling and reigning with Jesus, um, along with this inheritance, I, I'm trying to rephrase that in a, into a question. If, if, if we're ruling and reigning with him, it's really quite a, an astounding thought. Yeah. That's it, it just, I, yeah. Can I share with you what's helped me grasp that? Mm -hmm. Is a little bit is the two parables that Jesus told, uh, spoke about with the uh, talents, what we call the talents, which of course is just money. They were weights. Talents was a weight, money. And in the uh, parable, um, it's the master's money, the Lord's money. Mm -hmm. And according to Ephesians two four. Uh, God is rich in mercy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what they're being asked to do is taking the Lord's money, is to take the Lord's money and multiply it. Mm -hmm. All right. So they do business. The, the word occupy mm -hmm. in Greek just means do business with it. Mm -hmm. All right. So we do business with the Lord's money. We multiply his mercy. All right. Well, they, we center often on the conclusion when you, we hear, well done, you good and faithful servant. And mm -hmm. we say, mm -hmm. oh, I can't wait to hear for the well done. All right, but there's more to it than that. And I call it a non sequitur. It doesn't seem to follow. In the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, mm -hmm. he says, uh, you have been faithful over many things. I will make you ruler. Isn't that the word, mm -hmm. Brother Ken? Yeah, ruler. Ruler over many, many things. things. That doesn't seem to follow. In our thinking, we think of heaven as a place to sit around doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So the inheritance has to do with authority in this mm -hmm. earth. Mm -hmm. in the knowledge of who our husband is, and as we said in a previous session, how he thinks, mm -hmm. and we've managed his money well on earth in this life, what'll it be like to be part of the royal kingdom in the coming age, what we often call a millennium? Mm. Have you thought much about that? Well, <laughs> I have. I just, I didn't think of it from a perspective, though, of ruling mm -hmm. and reigning. Yeah. Just, I was, I, 
for me, I always think about being in his presence continually. Yes. I, I, you know, even though we discussed the ruling and reigning, that was what came to mind with the after effects. That's how I phrased it here. Um, sort of a Song of Solomon next yes. chapter. Yes. You know, where, okay, where is this all leading? But I hadn't thought about the ruling and reigning with him, even yeah. though I've heard that numerous times. That, Yeah, it's a new thought for me, something fairly new. This has been percolating in me for over a year. In the, in the parallel parable in Luke, uh, when he's talking, about, I think it's Luke 19, he's talking about um, the parable, and there they all get the same amount. The one in uh, mm -hmm. Matthew 25, they get, the uh, they get a different amount. But here they all get one talent or pound in the King James. And again, well done, you good and faithful servant. But uh, the reward is, have thou authority over ten cities. Mm -hmm. So I've challenged some of our people, are you ready to be mayor of our town? Mm. Mm. And most of them say, no, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you're being trained, and this is part of the inheritance, and you've learned how your husband thinks, and you're able to carry out his will in this new world to come, the millennium, we call it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we know what to do and how to rule wisely. It's said oh, so many times, Daniel and his three friends were wise. wise. Mm -hmm. And they were made rulers over Babylon. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. And they were wise. They knew how to do it. Mm. Well, I think God is training us to know how to do it. And there's, there's a joy um, in understanding our husband and what he wants done and carrying it out and it, it's almost like every night he says to us, you've done well. Mm. You've so done it's not what, just a one-time statement. No. You've done well today. I'm so proud of you. You know me, don't you? Yes, I do. I'm so privileged to be part of your royal family, Jesus. There's a whole aspect of this life after marriage with Jesus that it just touches the deepest part of my being. There's a reason why I'm alive. Mm -hmm. So the wedding is just the beginning of the adventure. <laughs> Brother Ken, that should be emphasized more. Mm -hmm. I have often quoted in that same second chapter of Ephesians that in the ages to come, to come. he mm -hmm. might make known unto us the amazing greatness of his kindness toward us mm -hmm. through Jesus. Is it, is it, do you think it's really possible it'll take more than one age for us to appreciate our salvation? Well, if the angels are looking on and amazed yeah. by it, yeah. you know, yeah, it's, it's something we're going to be yeah. taking in, yeah. not instantaneously, but yeah. over time for eternity. We used to have to sing in the faith homes every once in a while. We were encouraged that old hymn, It Pays to Serve Jesus. <laughs> mm. It pays to serve Jesus. <sighs> we're not going to come out on the short end of the stick at the, after the wedding and say, ah, oh, I made a mistake. Should have never married this man. That will never, never enter our minds. So you said before we began, you know, where are we laying up treasure? The Lord's made that very real to me. Mm -hmm. I'm laying up treasure in heaven and nothing can destroy that. Mm -hmm. No stock market crashes. <laughs> no thief coming in and stealing my rubies and my, and my gold. This is eternal. It, Peter calls it incorruptible. Mm -hmm. 
and that it fadeth not away. He calls it an inheritance. And it, he says it's ready to be revealed in the last, last. time. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say it this way, Brother Ken, you can correct me if you think I'm wrong. Mm -mm. Only a fool would pass up an opportunity to marry this man. Because mm. what's coming is so tremendous that no suffering on earth will outweigh what's coming. To yeah, be the Romans, to Romans 8, 17 and 18. You know, that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory to be revealed in us. Yes. Yeah, this is, it's such a, a huge um, thing to take in. And I, I especially love the, the whole thing about the inheritance and laying up your treasure in heaven because there is so many things out there, so much chatter out there on the web about the stock market, about the financial situation, about our nation's debts, different yeah. things like that. And then people, yeah. oh, need to invest in this, invest in that. Yeah. But who's saying? Invest in the kingdom. Yeah. Invest in the kingdom, Brother Ken. That's where we need to put our treasure. I've often said publicly, if I were face to face with these rich men, I'd say it to them. I feel sorry for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you pass away, you're going to realize you missed out, if you do, on the real treasure. Mm -hmm. You may have been named the richest man on earth, but you may end up the poorest man in heaven. Mm. If at all. If at all. Yeah. That How is. hardly shall the rich enter, enter the, the kingdom. kingdom. Now, mm -hmm. the next parable is Zacchaeus did. And, yeah. the, <laughs> and he was rich. So there is hope. <laughs> right. All right. That's been a beautiful discussion. You want to wrap it up? Yeah. I, the thing is, for the viewers um, and for you, I can't thank you enough for sharing this with us because it is um, so needed in our day for us to have a candid discussion about where we should place our energy, our time, mm. um, and preparing for the bridegroom should be at the top of the list. I think about mm. The, mm. the frenzied activity of my wife and I in preparing <laughs> for the wedding day. And I won't go into details, but it was amazing how yeah. meticulous we were in yes. getting ready. Yes. And here it is, we're talking about the return of the Son of God, mm -hmm. and He's invited us to the marriage mm -hmm. supper of the Lamb, and how much energy, mm -hmm. time, thought goes into that, yes. or should go into that, yes. Yes. and how that should be readily on our minds. So thank you for um, just sharing with us these four sessions on preparing for the bridegroom. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. And this is, I hope that um, as you listen through this series, that you come to a greater appreciation of what it is to prepare for the bridegroom yourself.